section we will be discussing various air masses. Now in the section on climatology we have talked about the various zones of atmosphere, the pressure conditions. Air mass is one of an important topics to understand. But before we understand air masses there is something that we need to uh, be very clear of. When we talk about air mass we are talking about a homogeneous section of air which has similar characteristics and this section is not confined to a say city or a small area rather is it is confined over to uh, sections of continents. So when we talk about homogeneous air conditions in certain uh, region we basically talk about two things first is the temperature and the next is the moisture conditions. So these two things broadly determine the air mass of the region. Now the first formal theory was given by Bergen who was a scholar from Norway and he did a lot of study in meteorology. When he tried to explain air masses, he first talked about the characteristics of air masses. According to him, there are two major characteristics that we need to focus. First is the vertical distribution of temperature. So the vertical temperature distribution that we will see under the section on temperature was one of the major parameters he tried to understand and second was the similarity in the moisture conditions. So a homogeneous moisture condition is a must. Based on these two characteristics, he tried to identify the origin of land mass, according, uh, air mass sorry. According to him, the origin of air mass determ was determined by the homogeneous surface conditions and the light divergent winds. So the divergent winds that are flowing in a region would determine the condition of air mass. Based on that, he classified the world into two primary air masses. The first was the continental air mass which was denoted as C and another was the oceanic or the marine air mass which was denoted by M. Now each of these air masses were further divided into two subdivisions. The continental air mass was divided as continental polar and continental tropical. Similarly, marine or oceanic was further subdivided as marine polar and marine tropical. So based on this, in the map you can see these are the regions of continental polar and continental arctic that are marked. Then you have the marine polar areas that can be seen here. So these are all towards the pole. Similarly, you have the region towards the south pole with the continental arctic and marine polar. Then towards the equator, he classified the region which is lying in the continent as continental tropical and the region which is lying in the ocean as marine tropical. So that was a very fundamental classification that he propounded to understand the, uh, the air mass of the region. Then he said the continental climate is usually dry, cold and stable. However, the marine climate on the other hand is quite, uh, cold but since it is moist it becomes unstable. So that was the basic difference between the continental air mass and the marine air mass. Then according to him the polar air masses are usually stable. So the continental polar would be stable and the uh, marine polar would be unstable. Then similarly you have the tropical areas, the tropical areas were dry. In both the cases, uh, marine would be moist, so marine polar as well as marine tropical would be moist in contrast to the continental landmass. Now when there was further divisions of uh, air masses that were laid forward, there were two basic classifications based on which we could understand air mass. So first is based on the source of origin and the next is based on the uh, modifications in the atmosphere. So based on the source of origin, we classified the air masses into continental and maritime. So marine or maritime was one group, sorry, 
you have these are the continental ones and the remaining three are the maritime or the marine ones now we will understand the four basic parameters in each of these so continental polar we continental we will start with c that is the first way of nomenclature then maritime we would start with m so till here it is very clear then you have continental polar so p would be capital maritime polar so p would be capital then you have the tropical arctic arctic and then you have the continental tropical now understanding the four basic parameters based on which the source of origin of air mass has been classified the first is temperature as in the case of arctic and polar the temperature would be cold and very cold so you have the arctic regions and the polar regions which are cold however there would be tropical regions which are hot among the tropical maritime would be hot but the continental areas would be super hot so we say very hot and this would be the areas of i can say deserts so that is the first classification based on temperature then is moisture moisture as we try to understand the maritime would have high moisture so all with, starting with m would have high moisture as compared to the continental ones which are dry then you have the stability and when we talk about stability the continental ones are considered much stable as compared to the marine air masses because of the uh, less variability in um, atmospheric changes or i could say climatic conditions in case of continental regions so you have continental areas which are stable however you have the maritime areas which are unstable however under co a continental tropical there would be huge variations they, that would be seen and it cannot vary uh, it cannot remain constant over a huge span therefore continental tropical would be unstable finally you have the tropopause height the height of the various layers that's the troposphere and the uppermost limit of the troposphere is known as tropopause so height of the tropopause is very low in case of the polar areas however in case of the tropical areas the height of the a uh, tropopause becomes much higher as compared to the polar areas so that is the height of tropopause so that is the first classification which is based on the source of origin as we know that the tropical maritime you have uh, the tropical uh, region of the maritime will have convergence from various regions and it would since it's near equator there would be lot of convection currents that would be present in this now the next is based on the modification when we talk about modification in the atmosphere it can be either thermodynamic in nature or dynamic in nature so we will classify the next type of air mass based on modification based on modification i can say the air mass can be thermodynamic or air mass can be dynamic when i say air mass is thermodynamic that means there is transfer of heat that is taking place between the air mass and the surface so you have the air mass and the surface and there is transfer of heat or exchange of heat that is taking place between the region and that is known as thermodynamic so that's the first thermodynamic modification now thermodynamic modification can be classified as warm and cold so warm will be denoted by w and similar to the koppen's classification and the climatic classification cold would be denoted by k so that's a kind of standard notations notations used for uh, categorization so warm would be denoted by w cold would be denoted by k and that is the classification under thermodynamic modification now thermodynamic modification is determined by various phenomena or various features first is the nature of underlying surface so what is the nature of underlying surface that's the primary thing that we need to know when we are talking about the thermodynamic modification the path of movement of air the next is duration so in which direction it is moving 
how long it is moving is there any additional moisture that is seen in that region what is the uh, the impact of cooling activity or he uh, heating activity i can say so amount of cold or heat so cooling or heating activity would affect the thermodynamic modification now let's move on to dynamic modification when i talk about dynamic modification we also call it mechanical modification and this mechanical modification or dynamic modification talks about mixing of the actual movement of water by the turbulence which is seen in the higher atmosphere so uh, the upper atmosphere will see the turbulence and because of that there would be changes in the i could say mechanical mixing of the air masses that could be seen this would lead to two types of uh, air masses it could be either stable air mass or unstable air mass stable air mass would be denoted by s unstable air mass would be denoted by u so these would be the two types of air mass that could be seen under dynamic modifications now why why are dynamic modifications caused the first and the primary reason is the turbulent mixing at the lower level so since you have the surface level at the surface level there would be turbulent mixing of the air masses that's the first cause of the dynamic modification the next is subsidence of the air that's the subsidence of the air that's the second basic cause so you have turbulence mixing and subsidence of the air now subsidence of the air and turbulence mixing would lead to dynamic modifications however subsidence of air is governed by numerous parameters so first is there is large scale force of ascent that is acting on it which is leading to subsidence that's the first factor there is a, a kind of uh, active force that is involved in it then there is uh, convergence where there is areas of convergence there is shrinking that is taking place so at the regions of convergence you would have shrinking of air mass that would take place because all the air mass is kind of converging at a region so it's kind of shrinking at that point then there is lifting of the horizontal convergence that can be seen uh, in dynamic modification so these are the two basic type of modifications uh, that could be understood for air mass so for example we have talked about cp as continental polar now i can say that within the continental polar there can be various kind of landforms uh, sorry air masses the first is cpku so that is continental polar which is cold and unstable then i can say continental polar which is stable so it may exist it may it might not exist usually the continental uh, polar regions are unstable so we denote it by u only there can be another case where it can be say continental tropical it is warm and stable so that is another denotation uh, notation that i can make based on this so these are the two basic ways in which we can classify the air mass now we have talked about air mass so much but still there is one important question that remains can we do a general categorization for air mass the obvious answer would be no because air mass as we discussed governs huge areas at a stretch because of this the concept of air masses faced a lot of criticism the first criticism is the source that we are talking about for the air mass is really uniform we cannot say it is uniform for the complete area the next is it varies from region to region so we cannot say region a and region b within the cp type of uh, air mass that we are talking about would have similar uh, similar air mass conditions so it varies from region to region now the next thing is it is transitional in nature we cannot say it would be specifically this type of climate or this type of air mass in a specific area rather it is transitional and it keeps on switching the next is the next important region here is 
it is originally including the surface characteristics however when we talk about air mass we are not bothered about the surface characteristics but the surface characteristics definitely affect the climate of the region or the air mass of the region and these surface characteristics are determined by two basic things first is the temperature and humidity so variations in these two would lead to variations in the surface characteristics and these variations would ultimately affect the air mass of the region so these are some of the basic types of uh, i could say basic criticisms that we can say that air mass face we will be discussing more topics related to climatology in the further sessions you can subscribe to our channel for any further updates and leave any doubts as comment below the video we'll be more than happy to answer those have a good day ahead